We're talking fantasy tight ends, the final group in Matt Williamson's pre-2024 fantasy football positional rankings. Is there a new number one among tight ends in the NFL for your fantasy leagues? Coming up on today's Peacock and Williamson. NFL analyst Brian Peacock and former NFL scout Matt Williamson bring you expert NFL analysis every day in less than 30 minutes. Get an inside look at the NFL on the field and in the front office with elite breakdowns to next level analysis and in-depth information only for the real NFL fans. This is Peacock and Williamson, and it starts now. Welcome to the Peacock and Williamson NFL show. Brian Peacock alongside Matt Williamson at BB Peacock at Williamson NFL. Thanks, everybody, for making us your first listen on the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. We love our everydayers, and uh, we really appreciate it. Only about 20% of listeners, Matt, are subscribed. Did you know that? No. 80% of the folks listening don't even hit that subscribe button. Helps us out. What tremendously. are you doing? Yeah, you'll know when a new podcast comes up, and that's just a it's a podcast thing. A lot of people don't like to hit that subscribe button for whatever and hit the notification bell so you know when a new podcast is right there for your listening and viewing pleasure on YouTube or wherever you listen to this yeah, podcast. Come on, people, get on that. What are you doing? Let's go. This episode of Peacock and Williamson brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more with FanDuel as the playoffs wind down and sports stop sporting like we want them to. This summer, FanDuel is hooking all customers up with a boost or a bonus daily. That's right. All customers, something for everyone every day, all summer long. Visit FanDuel.com to get started. Okay, so fantasy football tight end rankings, Matt. And Travis Kelsey, obviously number one. So let's move on to number two. Wait, wait a second. Now, wait a second. Is there a new name at the top of fantasy <laughs> football tight end rankings for the first time in what feels like a decade? Sam Laporta, the Detroit Lions second year tight end, is number one for you over Travis Kelsey, over George Kittle, over Mark Andrews, over all of them. Matt, tell us why Sam Laporta is the new number one at tight end. Yeah, and I beat myself up back and forth on this. It's hard to put Kelsey at two because he still gets in the end zone with such regularity. But he has some extracurricular activities, obviously. And I did think his um, target share, not target share, but his they, they saved him a little bit for crunch time, third downs, red zone, which is when you want him out there for fantasy anyways. They're not going to beat up his body as much, save him for the, uh, the playoffs, et cetera, et cetera. But I put Laporta over him, and this is somewhat of an indictment on Jamison Williams. And, and I'm not picking on Jamison Williams, but if Williams, if I knew he was a solid number two, uh, it was going to garner five to eight targets a game, you know, we St. Brown's going to lead the team, then I probably would have had Kelsey over Laporta. But if Laporta remains, which I expect him to do, the solid second target in a great Lions offense, not that the Chiefs offense is bad, that's just fantasy gold, man. And he's really good after the catch. I mean, he passes the eyeball test. The film stuff is great. And, man, there's a lot of good young tight ends in the league. And I think he's number one. Yeah, and it's funny he comes from Iowa because he's got that young George yeah. Hill about him where he can do a lot with the ball, run after catch, give you yards. And if you have the volume on top of it, which is the thing missing from George Kittle these days, even though Kittle's still putting up yards, uh, you're going to, in those PPR leagues, which is uh, we're, we're we're playing the half PPR ranking right yeah that's what i did we're doing it tone the line a little bit but um the 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 volume is there for him he's a phenomenal player he's going to be on the field every down he's earned the trust of his quarterback and his play caller still has the same play caller luckily yeah. for the detroit lions is last year uh, i love it for sam laporta and you know unless there's some big sophomore slump or an injury coming he could absolutely be the number one tight end this year and there might be more a lot more volume on tap for him from week one on um which might actually hurt amon or st brown more than anybody Maybe, maybe, and want to make this guys. good. I, I want to make go, oh, go, go, go. Right. They're just both middle of the field players, is all I'm saying. Yeah, like, I you would like in a, a perfect world, Jameson Williams, or you know, somebody a little bit more volume on the outside, leave the leave it open over the middle of the field for Monra St. Brown. So you have a tight end and a a big slot receiver kind of working in the same area of the field, but it's working for that team and. um So that's you know that's just that's the offense. They're they're gonna pepper the middle of the field with those two guys. Yeah, and played almost all their games in a dome. I, I just think of run after the catch and late in the season weather. I think that's helpful. Um, real quick, I mean, 
usually I'm sure fantasy people realize that over the last couple of years, if you wanted Kelsey as the clear tight end one, you might've had to use the eighth pick overall, the 10th pick overall, an early second. This year, because there's so many tight ends, you can wait a little to get your favorite, Laporta or Kelsey, or if you're like me and you don't mind either one, and really number three and four are pretty exciting too. It, it, it might be a decent year to kind of hold your water a little bit and take your tight end maybe in the fourth round, the fifth round, because there's a lot of them, man. That that will, that's So I want to talk about some of the, the younger tight ends in the NFL yeah. as well, some breakout candidates, but this is one of the deepest tight end classes uh, of fantasy football players i can remember you, yeah. you can wait a lot you can maybe wait like people used to wait on quarterbacks right because of how many good ones if you like the 10th one you can wait a long time and stack the rest of your roster um so kelsey is number two for you here is there how big is the tier after kelsey would be my question for someone who wants a top tight end and waiting and could zero tight end be the strategy this year because we've talked about how eh, hero Running back rather than zero running back might be the way to go. Everyone's going to need wide receivers. You can get them early. You can get them late. You can get them middle. Maybe you want to go get one of the top quarterbacks and then wait on tight end in your fantasy league. Zero tight end strategy, Matt. What do you think? Yeah, I do want to talk about that. But before we go any further, would you have Kelsey or Laporta? I mean, you're on the clock. You have to take a tight end. Everyone's available. Who are you picking? I would take Kelsey still. It's hard to it's hard to turn your back on that guy. <laughs> <laughs> and, and it just it's it's built in. I, I I know he's still got it in him. He can still get open. He's got the great quarterback, and there's nothing in the offense that I think is going to take anything away from him being the main target when he needs to be. But I can see the beginning of the end with him. Just age, mm -hmm. off field stuff can be a distraction. Um, he you he, you hear him speak, and he speaks about the future you know sure, just, sure. it's natural progression of of human beings right and he's like oh it'd be cool to play in london someday and i was like well what about 2024 with the chiefs and winning my fantasy league you know what i mean it's like yeah. Le sam laporte is like i can't wait for week one and travis kelsey's like oh what else, what can we do after football you know so um and speaking of london i mean he's been on the eras tour forever i mean <laughs> has he been pounding the weights and right. hitting, you know and, and what's he up and i wouldn't blame him one bit he's living a great life you know absolutely not like go live your life travis kelsey my my fantasy team comes second i know to travis kelsey's <laughs> life for him <laughs> right uh and <laughs> i just worry the chiefs come second and he's got rings already you know and so um the, it, it does feel like the beginning of the end, and he's an older player. Tight ends can age gracefully, so I don't yeah. expect him to fall off a cliff or anything like that, but I wouldn't fault anybody for maybe fading Travis Kelsey a little bit, especially versus what, how we've treated him in recent years and in, in him being one of the best receiving tight ends ever. And he doesn't stand alone anymore as by far the best guy. You yeah. know what I mean? I yeah. mean, so it's a little different. It might be time to sort of pivot off him. We can talk more about this as we go down the list, but – I don't see distinct tiers. Like, I mean, it wouldn't shock me if the third or fourth or even the fifth guy on my list ends up being number one when it's all said and done. I would not go zero tight end, but I might go tight end eight through 10 and be loaded at other positions and then grab another one that's 15th on my board or something like that that has some upside. So I, I, I wouldn't mind having a couple of cracks at the apple with these guys. I mean, I'm looking at your list and we'll get to who these names are, but 10, 11, 12, 13. I would have not no bad. problem having those guys as my tight end one. So yeah, I, not bad. I'm for sure waiting on tight end when, when I look at this, unless someone's glaring and still there for you mm -hmm. in an area where you don't like everything else. And you could still go early in the tight end market. I'm not saying it's the only way to play it, but uh, that it, it's, this is a really good group. And, and I do think there's a tier after the top two guys right now. I do, I do. And Travis Kelsey, although that second tier, I like a lot. Um, Mark Andrews comes in number three for you. And then, the guy that I think everyone expects to break out and go crazy. And who knows, maybe we're talking about Dalton Kincaid, who's number four on your list as tight end one next year, even ahead of Kelsey and Laporta, because he's kind of got what, like you're drafting Dalton Kincaid hoping, okay, star quarterback might even end up being the number one main target for his football team and that star quarterback and has that ability to get open and better receiver than a blocker. You know, he's going to be featured in the, you're not like going to, oh, we need him to block this play, right? So Dalton mm -hmm. Kincaid's the guy that's really interesting to me in that next tier of guys who maybe even could leapfrog everybody. 100%. Uh, and Andrews has done nothing wrong. I mean, his stock should be as strong as ever. He's in a great offense. Rock Lamar, solid. Uh, rock solid. I mean, Lamar thrives throwing in the middle of the field. 
And I'm with you, though. I think Andrews and Kincaid probably lead their respective teams with MVP-type quarterbacks in targets. And that's, like, all I need to know. And neither one's going to be in-line blocking, you know, uh, big you know, miles Garrett on you know week three or anything right. like that. I mean, they're going to be out there in space. They're going to be used as receivers, especially Kincaid. He's a space player. He passed all the tests as a rookie. The way they treat the receiver position implies to me, they want to get him the ball a ton. They got him the ball a ton when Buffalo made the offensive coordinator change. Like I have no concerns at all. Like, again, he might be one on this list a year from now undisputed. That's the top four. Next, we will go five through. Let's see how many are on the list. 20 or so? 21? is a, There's an asterisk next to the last name on this list. What to do about TJ Hawkinson in your fantasy leagues. Matt Williamson's 2024 fantasy football tight end rankings. Next. Today's episode of Peacock and Williamson brought to you by FanDuel, America's number one sports book. I love sports. Matt loves sports. We all love sports. That's why we're here talking about them every single day. We love sports. and You love them so much you never want them to stop. And sometimes it gets a little lean through the summer months after the NBA, NHL seasons are over. we got Major League Baseball every day, which is awesome. But all you have to do is open the FanDuel app and dream up bets anytime you're in the mood, whether it is uh, daily Uh, Major League Baseball games, who's going to hit the next home run, strikeouts, over-unders, props on every game, home run derby, who's going to hit the most home runs in the home run derby, but tons of ways to bet on the 2024 NFL season, which tight ends are going to lead the league in receiving, over-unders on receiving yards for so many of the top receivers uh, and, and passers in the league. Uh, And this summer, FanDuel is hooking up all customers with a boost or a bonus daily. Not just new customers, all customers at FanDuel. Something for everyone, every day, all summer long. So head over to FanDuel.com and start making the most of your summer. Again, that is FanDuel.com. FanDuel, official sports betting partner of Major League Baseball. So top four fantasy tight ends. We've got a new number one, Sam Laporta, Travis Kelsey, Mark Andrews, three. Dalton Kincaid, four. And I uh, feel really good about those guys. Uh, there's some other players I feel really good about in the next group. Uh, but you have Trey McBride coming in at number five. So you believe the breakout that we saw last year from Trey McBride. Took him a little while to get going in the NFL. Yeah, and you know, sort of a slow rookie season. Not crazy, you know, unusual for tight ends. And also not the best team around him, but... I've mentioned this with every step of the way. It's you know, especially Kyler Murray, who's my sixth uh, quarterback, which is much higher than consensus. I'm pretty bullish on the Arizona Cardinal offense. I think their lines come a long way. A healthy Kyler to start the season. Guys like McBride and Harrison, you know, look like they're impact players. Even a Michael Wilson. There are some stats out there that McBride really thrived when he was really like the only option. And you know, how will he handle probably being the two? But again, I always go back to the tape and he moves really, really well. I mean, he was the first tight end selected in his draft class. I mean, he had some blow up games. I have no reservations at all about McBride being, you know, a high tier guy for the next handful of years. It's really easy to envision how it could go great for Trey McBride at five. Number Mm -hmm. six, Kyle Pitts, same thing. It's like, man, I could really see how this could go great. But I'm also kind of like, ah, that's why I want to wait at tight end because like, I could see the other way too. I I could see it being like, okay, I got a solid tight end, but there's weeks where my backup tight end clearly outperforms my top tight end, and I spent a fourth-round pick on this guy. Yeah, I I hear you. I mean, all these guys, they're not all going to hit. I mean, we sit here – in early July talking about how great the class is and it it really is a good group, but there are some holes too. You know, I mean, not all of them are going to progress like we think. I mean, that's definitely true, but boy, I like the group overall a lot. And then you get to number seven and you got a guy who's been a stalwart and, you know, is always among the top uh, receiving tight ends in yardage. Doesn't quite have the number of receptions in your PR leagues because it's all about in that 49ers offense. It's all about efficiency. George Kittle coming in at number seven. His ADP is definitely higher than seventh tight end. Uh, some of it is name value, but um, he, he, you know, last year we're talking about a thousand yard 
receiver, a tight end, but only on 60 something catches. There's guys that get 30 more catches. So you don't need the yardage. So uh, yeah. when you talk about those 49ers receivers, there's a lot of efficiency built in and, and the volume's not quite there, which is why I can see you would put all these other six players ahead of them. Uh, and, and kind of just speaks to the depth of the position that you could potentially get George Kittle as the seventh tight end in your fantasy football leagues. And you nailed it. You know the Niners better than anyone. And yes, if he's sitting there with six tight ends off the board, I'll probably run to the podium to put the sticker up and Kittle there. And we just know that there are some down weeks, as is the case with Devo and Ayuk too. But then there's some monster weeks where he has two or three touchdowns and running through secondaries, destroying yeah. people. I mean, he might be the best football player on this list, period. Um, real quick on Kyle Pitts at six, though. I can't quit this guy. I mean... I watched a lot of Falcons tape, which was hard to do after the Steelers signed Arthur Smith, and they used him almost like a vertical X receiver. I mean, his usage was really hard for fantasy production. His quarterbacks were dreadful. And his quarterback bad weren't knee. throwing those types of balls. No, no, not at all. He's running like clear out routes and stuff like that. Like I just think a healthy version of Pitts with Cousins in a new offense could make him number one. All right, we'll Good. put a pin. We'll put a pin in Arthur Smith because I got questions for you a little bit later down the list yeah, here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, when it comes to tight ends, but yeah, that, that's a huge boom play for Kyle Pitts and a new coaching staff. You're crossing your fingers. The same with Bijan. It's like you kind of gotta. You and I. Yeah. I don't know if there's going to be enough for Drake London and Kyle Pitts and Bijan Robinson, but one of those guys has to hit huge for the Falcons, right? I would Maybe think. Two. I mean, I, I still am in the camp that Pitts was a rare prospect coming out of Florida and. He hasn't done as much to disappoint as people think. You know, and he had a thousand yards. Zone. How is this guy not just throwing right. down books in the red zone? You know? Yeah. I bet that changes. Uh, number eight, he's a player that was on a lot of my fantasy football teams last year, and that is Jacksonville Jaguars tight end Evan Ingram. And he gets a lot of targets in that offense. And again, you're just talking about the eighth tight end on this list and someone that I feel pretty rock solid about. And if you don't get Mark Andrews early, uh, wait a couple of rounds and get Evan Ingram. And you can feel pretty good about knowing what the usage is going to be. And he's got a good rapport with his you know, young ascending quarterback. Yeah. And you know, we had the host of Locked on Jags on here and he talked about Ingram heavily about volume, volume, volume. You know, He does not get targeted downfield all that much, but he's good after the catch. I mean, he was a former first round pick that ran in the four fours. His first year in Jacksonville, he had 98 targets, and last year he had 143. I mean, I know they drafted Brian Thomas, but, I mean, they also got rid of Ridley. I mean, I think he's going to be a highly, highly targeted player. What's wrong with that, you know? Here's another guy that I kind of stay away from because his career has gone so up and down, and I'm kind of surprised he's still on the same team and has kind of won it back over again as like a, a tight end one in the NFL. That's David Njoku uh, coming in at number nine on your list. Yeah, yeah. and you know, the Jags and Browns, you know, these are both the same draft class, Engram and Njoku. These guys have gotten paid now. I think that shows that they're you know going to be major portions of the passing game. Mm. Um, Amari Cooper is maybe the only guy ahead of him in the pecking order. I mean, it, it hasn't really mattered. Well, Watson and Njoku haven't had a great rapport yet, but Watson really hasn't with anybody. But the coaching staff seems to love Njoku. Has some drops, but he's great after the catch. I mean, the ability is pretty obvious. He looks like a first-round player, but there are some inconsistencies. I'm, tr I'm thinking back, and, and correct me if I'm wrong here, because I'm just going off vibes, and, and I don't have the numbers in front of you, but – Deshaun Watson, you know, throws a, a pretty deep ball and he's kind of more of a big game hunter and mm -hmm. he'll throw the ball down the field, let his receivers make plays. He doesn't seem like the type of quarterback that is going to be the the big tight end. Worries me a little bit. Well, yeah, right. Is, is, is that and, and so if he's the guy, I don't, it's, it's again, it's like Njoku's a good player, but he's not quite as dynamic as some of these guys, even though he's kind of a freak of nature. It's it's a different style of freak of nature that he is. He's almost built like a defensive end and is just completely rocked up, but he's a little tight as well, you know, so mm -hmm. he's not like dynamically fast. He's, he's not amazing after the catch, but he's kind of just pretty good. Um, Njoku scares me and as and he's a fine player, but I'm not fighting to get him. But he deserves to be in the what in the tight end one category as well. With, with what yeah, I'm with you. I, the 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 Watson the Joku dynamic worries me a little bit because I do think they'll throw the ball more. I don't think we have a great feel for what Watson is even is. But you're right; he is right. more of a drive the ball down the field, extend plays. 
you know, where you have all these, I mean, they went through so many quarterbacks last year. Tight end was pretty friendly to DTR and those type of guys. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Which, which kind of brings me to this next player. Like I always have a prejudice against guys like Jake Ferguson and Dalton Schultz. Cause they don't look like David Njoku or run like Evan Ingram, but Jake Ferguson is in such a good position. Most people have him like ahead in the Joku, ahead of Ingram, might be the second leading t- target getter on the Cowboys, which is massive. But yeah, I, he doesn't just blow me away, you know. There's a lot of opportunity on the Cowboys outside of CD Lamb to find a lot of value in, you know, whether it's Brandon yeah. Brooks or Jake Ferguson, or I, I don't know if I want to go down the Zeke. Elliot path, man, but he might be, you know, you can catch the ball too, you know. So, um, and I, I would probably lean toward Jake Ferguson as far as targets, but uh, you know, Brandy Cooks, the guy you can get at the very end of your fantasy drafts too. So, there, yeah. there's definitely some value to be had there. And uh, you're just playing the volume game there because you can't throw, they've kind of tried. Uh, how many targets 180 targets or something for CD Lamb last year, uh, but there's right. still a lot of other targets to be to be divvied up between the other players. It's just who's going to think it. they led the league in pass attempts or right at the top. And that's probably not going to change. I wouldn't, I wouldn't imagine that changes. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Next we're going to finish up Matt's list of fantasy football tight ends, 11 through 21, and maybe some sneaky sleepers here in this group that aren't projected to be tight end ones that become that for your fantasy football leagues in 2024. Next. All right, we're on to number 11. Here's the top 10 once again for those of you uh, who might have forgotten. Sam Laporta, one. Travis Kelsey, two. Mark Andrews, three. Uh, Dalton Kincaid, four. Trey McBride, Kyle Pitts, George Kittle, five, six, seven. Then you've got Evan Ingram at eight, David Njoku at nine, Jake Ferguson of the Cowboys, 10, which brings us to Dallas Goddard at number 11. And this is where you start to really look at the depth of this. And Dallas Goddard was top five tied in many fantasy drafts for people. Yeah, and I love the player. I think they like him a lot. I, I I think he's just kind of a victim here. Of A lot of guys are just slightly ahead of him, and he's not coming off a great year. I think that there's some mystery of are a lot of targets going to go to Saquon Barkley. They go give him money, but Hertz has never thrown to backs. So I don't really believe that. I still think Goddard is the number three receiver on a great offense. I mean, but the two receivers scare you a little bit, you know? So Jalen Hurts by far has the most uh, short yardage touchdowns in the NFL over the last yeah. couple of years and the tush push and all that. No Jason Kelsey there anymore. Could Dallas Goddard see an uptick in the red zone and, and get some of maybe. those get some of those vultured touchdowns back potentially? And, and I mean, you know, if it, you know, maybe Zaquan Barkley is the beneficiary and not Dallas Goddard. But even if it's two more, that goes a long way in tight end fantasy world for the year. You know, absolutely. Uh, here's a guy that might be a year away, but Brock Bowers, first round tight end. He might be on the Dalton Kincaid trajectory where uh, year two is the year, but he's number 12. That's the end of the wide receiver ones in your 12 team leagues. I, I, I like Brock Bowers and I wouldn't be shocked at all if by the end of the year, he, he's putting up big numbers for your fantasy football team in the playoffs. Yeah. You mentioned Kincaid, even McBride. Those guys had really big second halves of the season last year. Young guys. Maybe it takes Bowers a few weeks to get his feet under him. I don't like his quarterback situation. And frankly, I'd be a lot more comfortable with the top 11 before we get into these guys. I'd, I'd love these guys as my backup tight end. But am I too, am I too high or too low on Bowers? He's a tough ranking for me. Uh, I, I think it's perfect. Okay. I, I, and actually, I love his situation on the Raiders because I don't think they're going to be good. I think they're going to be throwing a lot. And I think their quarterbacks, uh, Gardner Minshew, is going to throw the ball to tight ends all day long, right? <laughs> like, I Yeah, probably. So uh, if it's t- Gardner Minshew, we'll see who wins the quarterback job. But um, I, 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 it doesn't, it's not a negative that he's on the Raiders right now. And I don't think Michael, uh, I, I don't, um, uh, my, uh, sh- Mayor. Uh, Michael Mayer, thank you. Uh, yeah. From last year, clearly, they don't believe in him, and he kind of didn't believe in himself. He, he sounded like he wasn't all in on football last year. Maybe this lights the fire, and and Mayer's a better blocker. So I think Bowers is going to see targets even if they're both on the field. And why wouldn't they go t- two tights if they have two good tight ends? Because they'll be the two of the top 11 guys on their offense, right? Uh, so I have no problem with Brock Bowers and the Raiders, and I think you get a little extra discount on that. But rookie tight ends, you know, you, you shouldn't expect a lot early either. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of these guys, including Jake Ferguson and the, and the Joku and Engram I brought up that could be 
second leading receiver on their team, even Laporta. I guess Bowers is probably the leader in the clubhouse for that, although Jacoby Myers isn't bad. They must have a plan for him. I just don't know that I'm invested full full right now. I want to see it. How about this? So you go the upside and then you go safe. Talk to me about Arthur Smith and what you could expect from Pat Fryermuth in the Steelers offense this year. He's number 13. There would seemingly be plenty of targets available this year for uh, a tight end in the Steelers offense. And how about you go Brock Bowers back to back? If you wait on tight end, you go 12, 13. Maybe you start fire move at the beginning of the year and see what you have in Brock Bowers as your I like it. strategy. I like it. I, I'm, I expect the Steelers to extend Friar Muth here in the coming weeks. I think he's lined up to be the second highest target getter on the team behind Pickens, unless they make some big receiver trade. Arthur Smith uses the tight ends like crazy. I mean, I'm not saying Friar Muth is at the same level of you know the Falcons guys last year, but the Falcons tight ends had the most receiving yards in the league last year amongst any tight end room. Um, the Steelers, it's remarkable how few touchdown passes they've thrown basically in Friar Moose's whole career. Russell Wilson at least throws the ball in the end zone. I mean, he, I think he could end up with eight touchdowns, you know? Yeah. Uh, and he's a sneaky play where, you know, he's not really ranked as, is, is someone who's very high on a lot of lists. He's late tight end one, early tight end two type of a player, but it wouldn't shock me at all if he's a, you know, top, top eight. Tight yeah. end in the yeah. NFL this year. So, so I'm talking about with the zero tight end strategy and waiting. I love Brock Bowers. I love Goddard. I love Ferguson. I love Pat Fryer move. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think it does get a little bit lean. Johnu Smith's an interesting this one. This next guy's my sleeper of all sleepers. Like I'm getting him in Dynasty as a throw in pick. Johnu Smith? Yep. I've always liked him. You know, I think he's a very late bloomer. I thought he was very impressive quietly in Atlanta. Everyone's just mad at him because they'd throw it to him instead of Pitts and get mad at their fantasy <laughs> team. There's some hate there. And there's yeah. this expectation for a long time. So he's he's like post, post hype sleeper. Exactly. Exactly. But Miami's offense. I mean, I know that they have not featured the tight end, but this guy gets down the field. He'll always have single coverage. They're going to put up a ton of points. They're going to run a ton of plays. He's not the biggest guy, but he's a scrappy blocker no. as well. So, you know, he can get on the football field for teams. But, you know, uh, and every team that has him lets him leave too. So I don't know what to expect from Johnny Smith. Yeah, I would probably just bet big on the next guy. Number 15 oh, has yeah. got to be my number one sleeper, and that's Luke Musgrave of the Green Bay Packers. I know there's a lot of young pass catchers there, but a lot of these guys are fighting for touches on the outside. There's less, uh, less competition for targets in the middle of the field for Luke Musgrave. 100%. I mean, he is one of my dynasty crushes. I, I loved him coming out of school. He was even better as a rookie. Um, I think Kraft is banged up to start the season as well. Good offense. Just a lot of mouths to feed, you know, and, and and need to see it. I mean, he easily could be in the top eight, though, you know, by week eight. He does feel like he could be a feast or famine type of player, bit. though, too, where he goes big, a couple touchdowns one week, and the next week he gets three targets. Mm-hmm. Could happen, for sure. But he gets down oh. the field. Cole Komet coming in at number 16, followed by Chig. This is kind of a boring area. Yeah. You know? uh, yeah. Chig was like my big time sleeper. Uh, I was all too. in on Chig. He was on all my teams and it just kind of didn't really hit last year like I thought he might. No. So I'm probably back off post hype sleeper, maybe for Chig. And Cole Komet's kind of the opposite where you kind of know what you're going to get. It's probably not going to go big, but he's worthy of starting a couple times during your fantasy season at time. They're fine. And I'm even going to put Dalton Schultz here because he's next. There just is so many good receivers on the Titans, Bears, and Texans now. I think all those guys kind of are afterthoughts. You know, there'll be games they have one catch for eight yards, you know. In this area, I think I like Schultz more. Okay. Like I, that makes sense. You know, I like Luke Musgrave as a as a high end play, but I like Dalton Schultz as like a, a just a safe play for a tight mm-hmm. end too in your fantasy football leagues. He's a good player; he can get open. And in that offense, I feel like there could be potentially a little bit more for for tight ends. Um, although they've added more talent on the outside too, so you know it might be rougher to get targets there. And you know, CJ Stroud throws a beautiful deep ball, so why is he going to check it down if he can go over the top? You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I mean, this neighborhood, you're you're hoping for a tight end that, or a, a touch, touchdown that week that you've started them, you know? Yep, absolutely. Uh, so finishing up your list here, 19 and 20 is Hunter Henry and Noah Fant. And so, you know, whether it's, uh, you know, John U. Smith, Hunter Henry, Noah Fant, I'm just out on those guys. I, I've yeah. gone down those roads and I'm like, I'm not 
chasing that player anymore. What are we doing? And I know you you talked uh, glowingly about Smith, and you've got him ranked quite a bit higher than the other two guys. Uh, how do you feel about Henry and Fant? And then the last one on your list here is last, not because of talent, but because you just don't know quite what to do with him at 21. That's TJ Hawkinson. And uh, I guess we're treating Hawkinson, Matt, like he's going to be there for your fantasy playoffs, but don't expect a lot earlier than that. I'm just uh, Nick Chubb and TJ Hawkinson. I'm putting unbelievably low because I just don't know what the information is now. We'll get that stuff in camp. If by chance, you know, Hawkinson was going to start the season, he might be three for me. I mean, like I love his situation, but I'm just kind of putting him here just to keep an eye on him and we'll see. The, sh- the story has probably been written for Henry and Fant, but there is some ability there. I like them both as young players. Never quite lived up to my expectations. Maybe Henry is the touchdown guy for a bad offense, you know? Hawkinson is an interesting one, too, where, you know, if you have IR spots, you could potentially stash yeah. him. If, you know, whatever pup list, whatever list he ends up on, you might have an opportunity to uh, slap him on a list let him hang out, and then you've got a tight end one when he does come back. And, and there's plenty of depth here to have a fill-in tight end for the first half of your fantasy season, too. So that's why yeah, I'm in yeah. the, that's why I'm in the weight camp. Whether you end up with Hawkinson or, or Musgrave or Fryermuth and and Brock Bowers, uh, it's just a position you can wait on with so much talent at other positions. Uh, I'm in the firm wait on tight end camp unless one of those top guys really slides to an area where uh, you can't pass them up in your fantasy football draft. I'm leaning that way too. And I, I didn't rank Kate Otten, Ben Sinat, Isaiah Likely, Jelani Woods. But all those guys have ability too. Like, I mean, there's yeah. some there's some depth here that you can roll a dice on the last round of your, your draft that might catch, you know, seven or eight touchdowns. Yeah, kind of watch list guys, you know. Yeah, probably yeah. Probably more the dynasty crew is going to be like, okay, I, I want – uh, you know, Jelani Woods on my team is my number three mm-hmm. tight end, and we'll see. He might end up being a tight end one. He, he's one of my favorites as well. A lot of talent there. Yeah, Kate Otten, uh, Ben Sinnott. I think he's got a, a great opportunity with the with the Washington yeah. Commanders as well. So that's another phenomenal one. Probably not a player you're even going to draft, but a, a watch lister for sure. And look, Ben Sinnott could be a light version of what we saw from Sam Laporta last year. I was kind of thinking the same thing. And in the dynasty community, he goes pretty high. So people mm-hmm. were... You know, I mean, I think he's somebody I don't want to quite put over these other dudes, but wouldn't take much for him to pass Cole Komet, Dalton Schultz, Hunter Henry. You know what I mean? Absolutely. There is Matt Williamson's 2024 fantasy tight end rankings. Uh, if you love the list, let me know at BD Peacock. If you hate the list, let Matt know at Williamson NFL. Drop some questions for our uh, mailbag later in the week. And Make sure you subscribe on YouTube. Drop a question there as well. Or anywhere you're listening to podcasts. And Matt and I will be back tomorrow right here. Peacock and Williamson.